Live. Like there, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I don't okay. see us online yet, but you're right. I think we're good. All oh, right, look, there, we can we can see the little people on top. There are five people on the live with us. <laughs> um, all right. So, Brad, what is the exciting announcement? Okay. Uh, Firebrand Meats is joining Nourish Cooperative. I think that's the exciting announcement, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so... Brad is going to stay on the team as like a consultant and we are going to do a lot of fun and exciting projects. Yes. Uh, expand the product line and combine cool resources with also Brad's cool ideas. So hopefully we can offer a wide variety of low proof of products. Yes, I'm feeling very energized because, uh, you know, I've sort of been plugging away uh, on my own here for a long time. And uh, yeah, and it's always, I'm always resource strapped, right? Like there's never enough resources to do what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and so uh, you guys, yeah, are, are making it happen in, in kind of uh, amazing and insane ways. Like, uh, you know, there's things that I've already suggested that are just sort of magically happening. It's it's great. <laughs> We've got a pretty cool team now with Nurse, so uh, things are going to be happening. So for people on my side, can you explain what is who is Brad and what is Firebrand Meats? Right. So uh, my name is Brad Marshall. Uh, I'm the author of uh, the blog Fire in a Bottle, and I also have the YouTube channel Fire in a Bottle. Um, which I believe this is being co-broadcast on, but we're really not sure because neither of us have ever done this before. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I've been raising pigs a long time. Uh, I had a butcher shop in Ithaca, New York uh, called The Piggery, and I was pushing low poof of pork uh, like 15 years ago back when, like today, very few people know what that means. But back then, almost literally no one understood <laughs> what I meant by that. So it's, it's, you know, we've increased, um, we've increased, uh, knowledge about the topic, like a hundred, 100 X, which means that it went from basically zero to like almost zero, but, but now it's non-zero anymore. So, uh, no, it's really growing and it's exciting times. And, uh, so I started firebrand meets, um, uh, after, after the piggery closed, I started Firebrand Meats, um, probably in 2020, I believe it was, it was, it was actually, I remember some of the initial phone calls were made, uh, during the, during the pandemic. So, um, it was definitely 2020 and, uh, um, yeah. And it's, uh, it's been a, a labor of love and, uh, uh, I've been, you know, we've, uh, we've designed these cool new feeds and we've been working on the breeds and this sort of continues my research from uh, the piggery that I've been doing for 20 years. And so it's just about, you know, um, you really can change the fat composition of pork by getting the feeds right and getting the breeds right. And that's uh, and that has sort of pushed us to this moment. And like I say, um, I have all these cool, interesting, fun things that I want to do. But uh, now with that nourishes on board, uh, we will be able to actually do all of the cool things, uh, that I've been thinking about all these years. So it's, it's, it's really, uh, been a fantastic collaboration and, uh, Ashley's been great. And, uh, we did uh, FYI, uh, we did just transition the firebrand meets, uh, website, uh, from my server over to the nurse server. Um, there'll be, I just updated like the internet settings, how your browser finds it. So, connection might be a little sketchy for the next 24 hours or so, but that should settle down, uh, within a day, we hope. Um, yeah. And so I, I don't know, uh, if there's anything else. So I have personally learned a lot about PUFAs from Brad. So this is very exciting for me, uh, like fangirling a little bit. So <laughs> something that's really cool is that, Brad and I agree on a lot of metabolism things. And like the biggest point is the types of fat that one consumes day in and day out has a very strong impact on human metabolism. And it's changed the types of fat that humans consumed has changed dramatically over the last hundred years. So the goal that Brad had with firebrand meats, the goal with nourish 
we're just trying to return back to how they used to farm back yeah. 100 plus years ago when PUFA consumption was naturally very low. And so all of the exciting, fun collaborations that we're going to do is allow you to have more variety and fun things in your diet while not having to worry about metabolic damage from PUFA consumption. Because, I mean, I'm obsessed with food. Brad is a pretty good chef and has made a lot of fun recipes and things like that. So life, allowing you guys to maybe live a more fun and fulfilling and, and nourishing diet without feeling so restricted. Yes. I love, I love that point. And I love that you always come back to that point of like, you know, uh, right. We can be healthy and it doesn't have to be boring and it doesn't have to be super restrictive. We just have to understand, right. We just need, we just need the understanding of how the process works. And then it's like, Oh, look, we, we have all of these great foods that we can eat. Um, but the understanding comes first. Right. And, yeah. and once you, once you, uh, understand what you're going for, then you're like, Oh, look at all these foods that we can eat now that I've been avoiding for X number of years because somebody said it was bad. And, you know, um, and I think you and I have both been in that situation of changing, right. A lot of what we, things that we thought were taboo have moved much forward on the, on the list of, of foods. Um, certainly for me and I know for you as well. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting, right? That's, that's fun. And, and this is all, I love the idea. I love, yes, that you like to keep it positive and we're talking food, food positivity <laughs> rather than, <laughs> right. Rather than being afraid of our food, we shouldn't be afraid of, of, of food or of eating, yes. right? Like, yes. um, yeah, I don't think that's the way forward. So, yeah. Great. So as of right now, Firebrand Meats is a separate website than Nourish Cooperative because, guys, this is very new. I don't know how we're going to mix it yet, but right now it is a standalone thing. So you can shop at fire, www.firebrandmeats.com. As Brad said, there's some weird domain transfer. It's in the air right now, but the, the issues should be sorted out soon. And at some point, it will be mixed with the Nourish website. We're still trying to figure out the best way to do that, but... Um, it is all going to come under one entity where we are going to be offering like a wide variety of low PUFA products so that you can shop with ease and trust and not have to worry about these things. We, we will take care of those details of how foods are produced. And then you guys can have products that you can trust are not going to damage metabolisms and you can live a orthorexic free life. Yeah. Right. I, I don't yeah. even know what the word orthorexic, orthorexic means really, but uh, <laughs> people being very afraid of every single food that they put in their mouth, which I understand right. like the food system is garbage here. Right. But, true. Uh, true. There's a lot of food fear and yes, there is. Yeah. People are literally afraid because people say things are bad or good. So yeah. Right. And obviously there are a lot of uh, sort of dueling camps about yes. what is, Yes. what is good and yes. bad and uh etc and and i hope that we can bridge some of those yeah. some of those gaps i think we are bridging some of those gaps actually yeah um, brad fits into no category he makes keto people upset <laughs> carnivore people upset ray p people upset vegans upset so it'll be fun to pick his brain this yeah. is also we're going to have hopefully a lot of podcasts discussing important metabolic topics because that is a passion of both of ours, uh, kind of this obsession with metabolism, also obsession with PUFAs and food production. So hopefully a lot of exciting podcasts down the line as well. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Ashley and I are going to do some podcasts. I have um, suggested calling it brash, which is, uh, you know, brash is a, a bold statement, of course, which I hope we will make bold statements, but it also yes. happens to be the combination yes. of the first of you know the when you mash the names together brad and ashley yep. <laughs> it'll be fun it'll be fun we'll definitely um challenge some people's beliefs so for example why insulin isn't a bad thing uh why carbohydrates are necessary for metabolism uh so many other topics that i think are gonna make people kind of question their potentially dogmatic thinking right now yes absolutely Maybe we'll talk about some antioxidants. That's always fun for me. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, that's a really good point. Um, and 
It will make you, I, my hopes is get, getting rid of food fear. Yeah. Because there, we don't need any more of that. And so these type of um, hard, hard beliefs that people have about, you know, starches are bad or uh, sugar is bad or these type of things. Uh, where did they all come from? Where did they stem from? And also this recent obsession of super high protein intakes. Yeah. Where did that stem from? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Where did that come from? Right. That's a good question. Be uh, we'll and studying kind of what our ancestors were eating, you know, in the 1800s and early 1900s and seeing how many calories and what their macro compositions and, and diets were like, I think provides really useful insight. Yes. Uh, 100%. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's amazing. You know, we have, and it's funny. It's funny because there's such this prevailing dogma that um, that you know the problem with our metabolisms is that uh, people have started eating more, right, and that calories have gone up. And I don't, I, I can't see any real justification for that idea. Like people used to eat a, a lot of food. <laughs> like people yeah. used to eat a lot, and yeah. were lean. And so that's what one of the that's one of the prevailing mysteries. Um, that we'll be digging into. Well, I mean, um, I would personally argue that it's largely because of the increase in PUFA consumption. So it returns back to, you know, the original collaboration is being able to provide a food market where we can re eat less PUFAs so that way we can have better metabolisms. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is about metabolic rate. Um, and PUFAs act absolutely slowed on your metabolic rate. Um, and that's why we're dedicated to getting them out. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any, like, uh, any, like, uh, uh, real, like nuts and bolts kind of things we should say to like, um, I'm just thinking like existing Firebrand Meats customers. If you yes. have a subscription, um, yep. you'll continue to have that subscription. Um, I will also say that, um, I, I'm going on, uh, the, uh, Dr. Mercola's show on Sunday. So there could be a big influx. So, um, you know, you might want to, <laughs> you might want to stock up now. Uh, yeah. we're hoping to, to survive that. And of course, uh, you guys, we will do everything that we can, uh, to, um, and, and Ashley and I are talking about how to figure this out to make sure that existing customers get served, even if we have this big influx of new customers. So uh, we can't say exactly right now what the mechanism of that is going to be, but uh, don't worry, we, we we got you guys. Be patient, we'll figure it out. Uh, yeah. Allison, one of my friends, Allison jumped on and she said, can you explain the new company objectives again? Okay, so really quickly, Brad created a company called Firebrand Meats and he has a pork partner and he developed a low poof of feed, and he has the fatty acid analysis testing showing significant reduction in PUFAs in his pork products relative to, for example, our favorite Smithfield Foods. So pork pigs can have as much PUFAs as canola oil. So knowing if you're going to eat pork, know where that pork comes from, know what that pig is eating, uh, because their fats can be dangerously high in PUFA. So... Brad has the test results through Firebrand Meats, and now Firebrand Meats is going to be a part of Nourish, and, and so is Brad. And so it's all going to come together so that we can... All of this is really hard. Food production is really hard. <laughs> Being yeah. a farmer is very challenging. And so when, we're, when one works as a team, we can all succeed a little bit better and have more resources. Uh, it's very draining to be in food production. The margins are very slim. Uh, Mother Nature is very evil and animals are unpredictable. So there's always questions and unknowns. And so we're just collaborating. So that way there's a team effort and we can all, we all have a very similar end goal, which is to improve the food quality in this country and offer direct to consumer shipping directly to consumer stores, products that are going to help our metabolisms, give you a wide variety in your dietary cuisine. Yeah. Um, yes. And I, and I want to just reemphasize what Ashley just said, which is, this is really, really hard. And there are so many days when I wake up and I think to myself, 
is the only reason that I keep doing this is that I hate myself. Like it's, it's that hard, but you have to. <laughs> you I'm laughing to... because this is pretty much a daily thing. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's fine. It's yeah. Fine. And, and the other thing I, I will say, yeah, uh, just let's talk about those test results for a second. So uh, the Firebrand meats. So I sent a sample of, of, of fat from Firebrand meats and I bought some uh, pack of Smithfield uh, bacon and I rendered out that pork fat, right? And I sent them both in for testing. And the Firebrand meats, well, the Smithfield was, I think, um, it was around 16% linoleic acid and the Firebrand meats was around 6%. So, you know, that's a pretty massive reduction, right? We're talking about a 60% reduction. Um, and we might be able to get that lower going forward with time to test different ideas. And, uh, but, I'll, but what also happened, which was interesting, uh, and, and I, I don't know, perhaps unexpected, um, the Smithfield, uh, lard was like nine and a half percent stearic acid. And the firebrand meats was, I think around 15% stearic acid and, and stearic acid is, uh, we, we like believe, stearic acid. Stearic acid is, is we, good. We like stearic acid. It's probably the best saturated fat. And so. Uh, to get a 50% increase in that, as well as a 60% drop in uh, linoleic acid, is just a massive difference in how your mitochondria, right, are going to process those fats. Um, and we just think that that you know, uh, over right, if you're eating that product consistently over a year's time, I mean, the difference that can make can be monumental. So uh, that's why we're that's why we're doing this, right? Yeah, um, we. Brad has a ton of, as Mercola labeled you, you are uh, one of the best literature readers or, or something. So Brad <laughs> Brad is a, a very big scientist and, and loves studying the literature probably more than I do. And he's got a lot of knowledge on, he's been a pork farmer himself, on how we can actually manipulate and change the fatty acid profile. And so over time, we are just going to continue to optimize our chicken meat, our eggs, our pork, all of the other grain products and things that we offer through Nourish. So that way it can have the best fatty acid profile possible to set everyone up for success with their metabolism. Yep. So we're going to continue to fine tune it. And that's the cool thing about the collaboration. I would say that Brad brings a lot of the knowledge on kind of how to do that. And Nourish is going to be bringing potentially some resources on how we can we get there. And so it's going to involve consumers too. You guys are going to be a part of helping us make this change in the food system. So it's like all of us together. Right, right. I tell my customers, you know, on the newsletter, I say all the time that you guys are the only thing that keeps me going. And, you know, I sort of co-equally love and hate them for that. But, you know, it just depends <laughs> on the day, really. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I will say on that pork, the pork fat, so... If you guys, you guys can find the results online and we'll post them somewhere. Um, the difference between Firebrand Meats and Smithfield. There's data yep. showing that pork lard can be even higher in linoleic acid if they are fed something called distillered grains. And like, this is like the most evil thing to feed a hog ever. And it is so common. I'm in what used to be known as hog country of the U.S. in southwest Michigan. And it's actually a lot more common than people think that they are fed these distiller grains. So corn contains starch, a little bit of protein and oil. And the alcohol industry, the ethanol industry wants to extract that starch out. So then they've got to find a place for that oil and fiber to go. And that's commonly fed to pigs. And that is very high in linoleic acid. And so there's, there's research showing that for pigs fed that DDGS, dis dry distillered grains. Dry distiller grain solids, I think. It's a byproduct of the ethanol industry that's now pushed into pig feed because it's very cheap. Um, yeah. Also pushed into chicken feed. That even increases the linoleic acid content even more. So there will be none of that nonsense in our feed. Right, right. And that's a pretty new, and that's a reasonably new development that the, the ethanol industry... Um, didn't really take off. It was during the, the Bush administration. So I don't know exactly what term, but it was, you know, I feel like it was around 2005 that the ethanol industry really 
that's when they built all the plants and that's when um the the ethanol industry you know and this is not this is of course not ethanol for like vodka of course this is ethanol that we put into our gas tanks um consumes 30 percent of the u.s corn crop um full on 30 percent is just for fuel which is uh kind of insane when you think about it but yes but that as you can imagine, uh, creates a tremendous amount of, yeah, these dry, dry distiller grains. And so they, you know, and it's interesting, right? Like, so th that gets put into the feed system, right? And then we start feeding pigs and chickens with it. And, um, they don't really tell us that like, Hey guys, we're changing the fat composition of the pigs and chickens, but don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. You know, they don't, they, we don't even get that memo. They just, it just magically starts. If you read like pork industry news rags, and who uh, does that you'll know that that's fresh. happening, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I will say it's, it's even being fed to feed black cows. So I, I listened to this YouTube video, uh, a researcher from, I want to say Nebraska or Kansas state was at a feedlot and they were talking about all the health benefits of giving cattle DDGS to help finish them faster in feedlots. Right. And just a casual thing that they said was, you know, one thing that we are noticing is it's leading to a large increase in omega-6 concentration in the beef. And that's oxidizing pretty quickly. But we can add some antioxidants and other chemicals to the final meat to make sure that that doesn't happen as much. So this is happening to the beef. And, and I know people are, um, you know, very convinced that ruminant meat, you can't really change the fatty acid composition. Well, they are finding a way to do that. and. It's called rumen protected fats. So literally the cows are now indulging eating so much PUFAs that their machinery, their four chamber stomach can't even break down these fats. So it's just passing straight through them. And we are increasing the linoleic acid content of our beef. So like our food supply is being inundated with PUFAs across the board. And like you said, it is somewhat recent that this is seen a very large increase. And so the data that you see in the USDA food database, like if you go on chronometer, that's from before all of this started. Yeah. Those tests are not reflective of what's available at the grocery store now. Right. Like, like for instance, and just to back that up, um, you know, uh, the USDA database says that uh, pig fat has 10 and a half percent PUFA, something like that. But I've literally never once sent a commercial sample that came in under 15%. And I've sent probably a half dozen samples over the years and they range from 15 up to 18 or 19%, something like that. By the way, this is a, this is just a fun story. It's probably not super relevant, but um, the, the, the study in the literature uh, that shows the highest proof of content in, in, in pork and any animal product, probably um these guys had uh, extra sunflower seeds for some reason, and they fed them like 40% of their diet with sunflower seeds. And the oil, that, that hog fat, the lard was, I think it was 54% linoleic acid. That's hog fat, it was 54% linoleic acid. That's, that's the record. <laughs> so it can go that high. That's worse than vegetable oil. That's worse than consuming that, vegetable that's, oil. That's about the same amount as corn oil or soybean oil. Yeah. Uh, someone just had a good comment. Um, my only argument is that being particular about what's going into meats and feed is emphasizing or making orthorexia worse. Okay, so this that's, that's important. So if you take a step back, uh, what we're doing now in the food system isn't working. America is unhealthy. We are... We are our, our life expectancy is declining. Our chronic disease rate is exploding. And so there's all these different diet camps that are telling you, oh, it's the carbohydrates. Oh, it's the animal products. You got to be vegan. And there's got to be something happening, right? Humans aren't designed to fail this badly with health. Yeah. Um, and so Brad and I are in agreement that it's probably the dietary fats that we've been consuming. Um, obviously there's a number of like environmental toxins, um, increase in estrogens and glyphosate and Roundup and things like that. But gosh, as we will explore in future topics, the types of fat you consume literally impacts the types of fat inside of you. And when you change the internal environment inside your cells, that impacts energy production to an extreme degree. And so balancing 
really stressing about the importance of PUFAs without being orthorexic about it. Um, I guess we are going to agree and conclude that it's probably the types of fat that you're consuming. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously there's a, there's a, there's a fine line there, right? It's like you, um, we, right. We don't want to make people afraid of food at the same time. Like you say, something is clearly not working. Um, and I just like to point out that it's, you know, the knowledge, right? It, once you can demonstrate what the problem is, then it, you can sort of feel good about all of your other food choices, knowing that like, okay, I'm, I'm going to, if I can avoid this one thing. And the good thing about that is, you know, a lot of the things that have been demonized, um, um, you know, sugar and carbohydrates in general, uh, probably have been overly demonized, probably not that bad. Um, you know, and even, you know, and maybe even things like gluten, you know, are probably tied into, um, those intolerances are probably tied into the, to the polyunsaturated fats and how they are affecting your, um, immune system. And so it's like, yeah, if we can, if we can isolate the problem and then we say, oh, but as long as we, right, as long as we can avoid these couple of things, this whole world of food choices opens up. And so I think that's like, right, we need to focus on, um, all of the beneficial things that happen once you fix the underlying problem. Right. Yeah. 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 And and I mean, this is so opposite of what mainstream is going to tell you with the uh, Harvard food pyramid telling you to consume vegetable oils and avoid saturated fats, avoid dairy fats and butter and things like that. Um, Well, and they're also, and they're also constantly telling you just to eat less, which is, um, problematic on like 10 different levels one it's like yeah but i'm hungry so what am i supposed to do <laughs> like walk around all day with this nagging hunger um drink more that, water drink more water right drink more water yeah <laughs> and then two that that also um that also activates a lot of the bad enzyme systems that you don't want activated when you when you uh when you purposely restrict calories, that's not really what you want to do. So it's metabolically uh, caloric restriction is a problem. And um, yeah. And there's no evidence that people, like I said, like we said before, like people in the 1930s were eating huge amounts of calories and they weren't fat. So why now do we have to restrict calories? And so these are the, you know, yeah. Yeah. In early 1900s, late 18, late 1800s, they were eating a lot of calories. They were eating a lot of carbohydrates. They were eating animal fats. They were eating saturated fat. They did not have chronic disease. They were lean. Fast forward to today, uh, the biggest change has been the types of fat that we consume. There's no arguing around that. There's been a drastic change, reduction in saturated fat, increase in PUFA. And so that's kind of our thoughts on what has been one of the leading drivers in the change in health. And so we are hoping to provide the solution. Yeah. So that that way you don't have to worry about these things. Right. Right. Yeah. And I'll just say then, and just to add to what you just said, um, if you look at uh, the amount of white flour and white sugar that was being consumed in the year 1900, it was a lot. It was a lot. And, and uh, you know, and, and potatoes and, and rice and other things too, but, but a lot of white flour and a lot of white sugar, which, you know, we've, I think over the past 30 years have been led to believe that those two things are at the root of all of our problems, but it doesn't make sense historically. No, but they were consuming butter and consuming pork fed a more normal diet. Um, They were not consuming vegetable oils because that just wasn't really available at the time. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's sort of slowly crept in over the 19th century, but, and then exploded in like the, 1970s and 80s yeah and and And, 90s and now now it's infiltrating our livestock so like kind of everything that we consume is getting higher and higher but you guys will just have to stay tuned for future podcasts to learn a little bit more about why um but yeah any other uh i guess you can go to firebrand meats and place an order right uh we, we think so. Like I say, there's still this weird <laughs> issue where like I, so this morning, uh, Ashley can see the website and I yes. can't, I'm still being directed to the old website because it, well, that's how the internet works is the short version, but yeah, yeah like the little 
signals go up into the air and it takes a while for the old ones to get cleared out of the caches of the robots to direct yes. the traffic. Yes. Um, so you should be able to go to Firebrand Meets and place an order. If you can't today, you certainly should be tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> they say within 48 hours, everything should be completely updated. And I did it yesterday at like noon. So it's been 24 hours. Um, yeah. And we hope that everyone can place an order by tomorrow. All right. Any other final words of conclusion for the 18 people that are on the call and, and hopefully people are able to watch this afterwards? Yes, I think people can watch this afterwards. Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, one more time. I just want to say thank you to all Firebrand Meets customers uh, who have stuck with me through the trials and tribulations of this uh, of this project. And uh, I hope that uh, I, I believe I, I thoroughly believe that this uh Transition is going to give you guys uh, better products and uh, better customer support for sure, because I'm real hard to get a hold of and it's just me. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, and I'm very excited uh, to have you guys uh, continue to go on this journey with us. And uh, thank you. Yeah, cool. We're super excited. And if you have questions, reach out to support at nourishcooperative.com for customer yeah. service. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, I don't even know how to end the live. So right. It's just going to be think... us awkwardly poking at our screens for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brad, any other things to add? I think, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Okay. Thanks, guys, for tuning in if you were on the live. And... Look forward to future podcasts with Brash. That's right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.